Hi everyone, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. In today's video I'm going to be showing you all the pictures I've completed in the flower year. I was asked by Barb to do this and also I was just going to generally do a flip through of it anyway. I'm 30% completed, I think I've done about 26 pages, 27. Basically I'm really close to 30% and I think there's about 96 pages in total. So yeah, I'm just going to get started. So as you can see, my copy is very, very battered. I've had to put some masking tape on um, the book and I, I don't mind that. I think it shows that obviously I've had it a while and I've been colouring in it. So let's just get into it. So this is by Leila Dooley and I had this book from, I'm pretty sure it was... April or May from 2018 and I coloured my first picture in it and then I just left it for ages and then I came back in June and last year and decided to colour in it again so yeah it's been one that I've kind of left and then come back to but now I'm kind of solidly working in it so we've got this lovely green um, cover bit here and this is the nameplate page so this was um, the second page that I did in this book I think it was the page that got me back into colouring in it so it's actually m probably my favourite page in here there's another one that I really like but um, it's really really detailed this book is so detailed if um, you couldn't already tell by the cover so with this I think I just got my Holbeins and I was using them for most of this page and then I also used a couple of polychromous pencils but it's mainly Holbein and as I mentioned before I was uh, experimenting with mixing colours so this border here was a blue and a pink mixed together so it kind of creates purple effect. I searched up a picture of the peacock butterfly and copied it and that was with the Holbeins and generally in this book I just colour it with pencil and then I only put white gel pen for highlights if I need to so this doesn't have any glitter or anything like my other books. But yeah, I haven't put my name in that yet. And then we have the copyright page here and the title page, which I think I'll just leave. I don't think I'll colour that. And then we have a blank page on this side and then it starts. So the flower year is basically going through the year and showing the flowers that bloom in the certain months. So there's about six or seven pages for each month, I think. And... Uh, they are really really detailed. Some of them include quotes like this one and when there are pages with smaller items there, um, there is always writing showing what the flower is. So there's also an index in the back which we'll get to so if you uh, want to find out every single flower that's on that particular page you can. So this is the first one. I obviously coloured it in January. I tend to stick to colouring things in the month that um, I'm in at that time so I aim to get all of these done in a month which you know sounds really easy but they are detailed and they do take a long time so this one obviously has a lot of green but um, generally I did really enjoy doing this one I think there was a moment where I'd done all the flowers and then all of the leaves needed to be done and you know I kind of just had to take a break because this did have a lot of fiddly details in but I think this was mainly done with Prismacolors and Holbeins and then a couple of Polychromous pencils for the grass. Well, not grass, you know, all of the um, the green areas. And I tend to like the wreath. This is like a wreath, but, you know, um, I like the circular images. So there's quite a lot of different pictures in here anyway, but yeah. Oh, and this also has a lovely green ribbon. Um, as a bookmark so I'm just going to take that out actually I don't know why I've got it here because I'm not planning on colouring this page yet but yeah this is super detailed as well so I'm aiming at some point to complete this book don't know when it's probably going to take ages um, so I'm aiming to complete two pages each month from this book so far I've kind of done it there's been a couple of months I think where I've only done one um, but I'm so far on track and it will take a long time I know that but I don't really mind. 
So this is the next one and I actually did this straight after the January page because I already had the colours out for the crocus and the snowdrops. So I just quickly did those so they're the exact same colours. And then this one was obviously the February one. So with this again it's the same sort of pencils mainly Prismacolors and Faber-Castell pencils. And then I was experimenting with a bokeh background on this one. So I've done some dots here and um, I kind of wanted to do that because, you know, it's still quite cold in February. Um, I don't really know whether I did it to look like snow or rain or anything, but I, I just did it because I, I fancied it. I had coloured these before and this is really annoying me now because I can't remember what they're called. Coltsfoots, that's it. So, you know, they're brown, so they're not the most exciting thing, but most of these I'd coloured before, so it wasn't too hard to go back and do them so yeah that that wasn't too detailed but the grass at the bottom kind of took me a while so February I've actually completed nearly all of the pages which is good so these two pages I quite like because even though they're really detailed they're repetitive so once you put your pencils you can just kind of get on with it these ones were whips throughout pretty much the whole of the summer holidays. I had picked out my colours and everything for this page. I coloured most of it before I went on holiday and then this was kind of the page I was working on on the plane and stuff because it was really easy to do. Um, and I finished that midway through my holiday and then, and that was last year. And then this one I was doing throughout my holiday and I finished it pretty much when I got back. Again, I was working on this, um, on the plane on the way back. So, you know, they did take a while. These were kind of on and off pages. I didn't just work on these because it can get very boring just doing the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, uh, this was kind of the first time I was colouring the cultsfits and the primroses and the daisies and stuff like that. So it did take... Uh, a bit of getting used to with the colours and trying out new palettes and things like that but yeah I'm I'm pleased with these and as a double spread I, I quite like how they go together. So this is my other favourite page in this book so the blue tits I think I did uh, it wasn't in February this year so some of them I didn't stick to the month um, pretty sure I did these in like July, August time, maybe it was earlier, I don't know. But for this, I know it was definitely after April because this is when I had my Holbeins. So I used the Holbeins for the blue tits and then I used Crayola pencils for everything else. And I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I didn't do a background or anything so I didn't think I needed it. But this is one of the pages that actually do have some birds or animals in it there aren't many pages and this was a really close up one and I wanted to take my time with it and they did take ages but I was really pleased with it and it it is one of the least detailed double spreads so there are some super detailed ones which I'm gonna have to get around to at some point and I think I just searched up a picture and then copied them I don't think I did a I don't think I followed a tutorial the other thing with this is, is it was kind of one of those first times that I was using brighter colours. The deeper blue isn't actually showing up on camera very well, but uh, I don't tend to use bright colours like this, so it's quite fun to kind of get out of my comfort zone a bit. So I should really do these because I've done the colours before, but I haven't done um, these pages yet. And there are some really nice ones like this that have... Um, just one or two things scattered on the page so they won't be too tricky to do so the daisy I did before the other spread with the daisy um, just to kind of get the colours for the palette that I wanted to do and it was a really quick and easy one to complete so this one I did in March did take a while I think again I was kind of at that stage where I was midway through doing the daffodils I really liked how they were turning out and then picking the colours and actually doing the dandelions took so long because as you can see they're very tiny and well they're they're not tiny but all of the um, little leaves and things on it are so that took a long time and then the leaves didn't take too long once I actually knuckle down and do the leaves they they don't take long at all so generally I prefer doing the flowers and then everything else is kind of just you know 
green and I know it doesn't have to be but I tend to stick to that so again I like it because it's kind of that wreath and I just added a few pink flowers just as a bit of a contrast but this was mainly done with Holbein and Polychromis. I really like this one I didn't get around to it because that other one was quite detailed but that is a double page spread I need to do. So this one and I always forget the name of them Oh, this is going to annoy me. I always get, I always forget what the name is and then I remember. Oh, the Grape Hyacinth, that's it. So this is the index, as you can see. So I did these really, really quickly and then I thought, you know what, seeing as I've got the colour there, I might as well do this one. And it's been a whip since January, I'm not even going to lie. It's just one of those that I need to do, but I haven't. And I'm pretty sure, so I wrote down the colours for the crocus and the primrose, so I do need to get back to this. It's just one of those ones that I was really looking forward to doing, and then I kind of started it and got a bit bored, and it is very detailed. Some of my pages are starting to kind of fall apart, which is why, again, I put the tape here, but yeah, that's fine. So that is an ongoing whip that's been outstanding for a while. So this was the first page that I did in this book. The background was a tutorial from Always Colouring and this was pretty much one of the first videos that I ever saw um, on her channel, I think. And this was the first page that I did in May 2018. So I really like how it came out. At the time I was so pleased with it and I still am pleased with it because it is, you know, the first page in this book. The only thing is I've got to try and replicate this on this page and I can't remember the colours I use exactly because I know I use Prismal colours and I think I use Polychromis on the leaves but I can't remember the colours and I wouldn't really, I don't think they're completely accurate so we'll see when, when I actually come to doing that page I'm going to try and make them as um, similar as I can. So this one was done in March as well? No, it can't have been. Did I do another page? And I think this, yeah, this was March as well. So this one was done on a live stream actually, so we didn't get the whole of it done. We got all of the flowers done I think and a few of the leaves it didn't take long and it was all with Holbein. So I think I was also experimenting blending with a cotton bud instead of um, a blender pencil. So that was quite nice and the paper's quite smooth so it didn't really need much blending at all. So this is the most recent page that I've done in this book I believe, unless I did another one for... Hmm, maybe I did... maybe this was April? I can't remember. Either way, this was one that I did in April and I had actually started this a long time ago. This was going to be the second page that I ever did and I had started the blue on the top of the chaff inches I left it, I didn't like how it turned out so when I came back to this page in April I rubbed out the um, the blue that I'd done and started again this one is probably the most detailed page I've done so far and I have to say when it, when I had to start doing all of the tiny details it, it did just take ages it wasn't one that I enjoyed colouring that much but I do really like the outcome. I think it is really hard with detailed things to stay motivated and I'm actually going to be doing a video on how to tackle tiny details because it is something that I do struggle with from time to time especially in this book but I've found in some other books where it's not I mean detail is really hard because it's not necessarily whether things are tiny and small but it can also be in a page that there are just so many different things on a page and you kind of just want to get through them but you've got to give equal time kind of to each thing so I was going to do a video talking about that um, and kind of showing how I would tackle, um, tackle details but um, yeah this is obviously an example of a very very detailed page. So this one I believe I did mm, sometime last summer, I want to say around August, September time, maybe it was earlier. So this was again one of the older pages and I kind of went out of my comfort zone in terms of colours. So the 
bluebells I added a bit of pink to them and that was when I was testing my Holbein's and then I used lots of Polychromis and Faber Custer Classic pencils. I did part of this on a live stream as well and this was again one of the pages that was kind of on and off. I did leave it and then come back to it because it just was a lot of green and a lot of blue and purple and pink so yeah I did did have fun with it when I was doing it but I don't generally start a page in here and just solidly work on it it's not really one that I, I would do that with I, I do leave it and come back when and if I want to so with other books I will kind of just solidly work on the page but with this I don't so again this is one that I was going to try and do for this month but I haven't got around to it yet so as you can see that is kind of a less detailed one which is a nice feature in this book that was again another one I marked which I didn't do and this is my painted lady butterfly so I did this all with Crayola so this must have been September didn't take long and it was really fun I really enjoyed it I don't know what colours I used and I know there's another painted lady butterfly in this book which is really really annoying because I can't remember what colours I used oh well I'll just have to go along with it um, and then I went over this with some white gel pen and yeah that was it, it was a really nice simple page to do so that was a nice one to complete quickly as you can see I haven't started the May page yet which is something that you know isn't great I would have ideally have started it earlier in the month but I just put a post with some of my completed uh, no in fact all of my completed pages for uh, May so far and I mentioned that especially during this time you know do things that you want to do don't force yourself to do pages just because you have the time to do it you know just just do something that you're feeling and that's why I haven't got to this page yet because I'm not feeling it maybe this uh, video will motivate me to start colouring in it but so far it hasn't so again lots of the flowers in this page are ones that I've done before I think there's bluebells and primroses and stuff like that so it won't be too hard finding colours it's just actually knuckling down and doing it so we'll see if I ever ever do that it would be the first time in a month that I haven't done the month page and that's the last one I need to do so I really really do want to do it so here's the double page spread again the detailed one lots of these May ones are very detailed I do love this one but again it's just so detailed but I do love that it's a wreath so yeah there's the other painted lady butterfly and again this is one that I was going to do and then I wanted to do the easier page and then I thought well no because then I'll need to remember the colours and I might as well do both of them and I wasn't going to do that. This was the one that I did for April so the other one was March so this one I did last month so I did do two pages last month and I really like how the flowers came out. The leaves I do like but the the greens here are very similar in colour and I you know they're just leaves but it just did take a while even though it's not that detailed I just I just did it just got through it so this page was the first of the month pages that I did and I'm pretty sure I know I mentioned I think that another page was the first page that got me back into it but no I think this was I think I started this one straight after the title page this is my favourite one by far um, so this was again when I'd got my Holbein's it was pretty much all Holbein and Faber-Castell Polychromis pencils I love how the colours turned out I love the blending it's just my favourite page and I took my time with this so much it pretty much took me the whole month I started it at the beginning of June and finished it pretty much at the end and I you know, I don't tend to do that with a lot of these pages because, you know, I start it and then I leave it for a bit and then I just push through and do it. But this one was one that I really enjoyed doing, so that was nice. Again, very, very detailed. If you don't like details, I wouldn't recommend this book. Um, and generally, I stay clear of details, but this is the one book that I do do. So, this one was one of the older pages as well and if you saw 
when I was mentioning my Ivy and the Inky Butterfly um, colouring book, I've actually decided to do this colour for the butterflies. Slightly less um, bright than this, but I'm doing a. I've done a video that will be up after this video uh, showing how I've coloured my butterfly and Ivy and Inky Butterfly. So, with these dragonflies and butterflies, I coloured them and then put white gel pen and jelly wool glaze on it which is why they're all uh, shiny you know to give the effect of wings so that was that one and then after June I did do the month pages in order so I did, did, did do this one in July and I remember I was at my grandparents colouring this and I was on the beach and I was doing the dog roses and again this colour for the fox gloves is a very typical colour that I will do so I tend to just stick with those and this wasn't too detailed in terms of leaves actually it was one of the one of the nicer ones so yeah I do like how it's turned out but the only problem is I can't remember the colours I used so again it's not great for these two pages the dog rose and the fox gloves but you know I'll come back to it so Again, lots of detailed pages this month. Okay, the August one I wasn't very happy with. Um, again, I did this one on holiday. Or oh, I started it on holiday, maybe I didn't finish it. And I used um, pretty much Holbein and some Crayola coloured pencils. I just wasn't really happy with the overall colours. They're all quite bright and I did them accurately but mm, yeah, I'm not sure about the leaves and yeah, it's not my favourite. After the, the June and July ones, my um, pages kind of went downhill a bit. I wasn't really pleased with the colours of a couple of them and how, how I coloured them but I'll get to them. So the September one actually was was one of the better ones. I'm not sure about the background. I should maybe should have just left it, but it looked a bit bare, so I just added it. I'm really happy with the autumn leaves and the flowers. But I, yeah, I don't know. I needed to do something and I couldn't think of anything, so it is what it is, you know. But um yeah, I am I am pleased with that one. So again, lots of detail. This is an ongoing whip. And this is one of the only ones where you turn it this way to get the double page spread. So you can see these flowers. Yeah, I've been an ongoing whip pretty much since September. So this has been a long one in the making as well. So I don't really mind that I've got whips though because I know I'll have to get to them at some point. So, you know, I kind of just left them. Okay, October. I followed Chris Chang's tutorial for the... Oh my god. For the apples. Lost my words then. And the only thing I regret doing, and it wasn't her fault at all. Her colouring is amazing. I don't know why I did, but the green on the outer bit does not match hers at all. It, it looks completely different. But, you know... I just think the colours are quite bright, which again was probably just me pushing too hard. I I have done them really bright in a picture that I've done in Fairy Celebrations, but that was a completely different tutorial. And I think with this, um, I wasn't really used to doing bright colours in this book. So yeah, they are they are bright, but um, again, the leaves are kind of just leaves. But you know, together with the you know the berries as well it's just a bit much but this one is going to take a long time and because I only use pencil as well it takes even longer so this was the acorn one that I did and in hindsight I wish I'd done this page as well at the same time because they're the same colours I know I use Prismacolor for it but you know annoyingly I can't remember the colours I used so I will have to see about that one so unfortunately the November one is probably my least favourite page. So at first when I did the berries and um, 
the red berries and the purple berries I was happy with them but when you put the leaves with it it just all is so bright and I think these these especially these berries look quite garish and on the camera they look so bright even brighter than what they look like now I used black widow pencils and they work really nicely in this book it's just I think that my colour choice was a bit off for the berries and at some point I might go in with a slightly darker more muted type of red to just tone it down a bit but yeah I'm not really happy with this one and I'm quite sad obviously because it's my birthday month and stuff but I guess the picture overall is you know just berries and leaves so there wasn't really much else I could do with it but um yeah that's that one so I don't think I've done that many towards the end because obviously I tend to colour the flowery things more. So this was the December one and I coloured this pretty quickly. Once I'd done the leaves and the tree was pretty much there. I was happy with how my robin came out and then again for the background I just did a simple background and then put some dots with white gel pen to kind of show that it was uh, snow. The ivy's maybe not as deep as I could do it but I didn't want them really deep because then you know I just think that if they're kind of lighter it gives the effect that maybe there's snow on them. So this page was one of the ones that took me a long time. In fact, the holly took me ages and the berries took me ages because I didn't use a blender pencil. I used a cotton bud and a blending stump. Everything else was really quick because I just decided to do it and get it done. I then went over with some white gel pen just to do some little starry dots and stuff to make it look like um, it was sparkling or snow or something. So again, it was a wreath one. I'm quite happy with that one. So that's all the pages that I've coloured and I'm just going to show you the index. So for the index you get all of the pages shown and then underneath, if it's one spread it just says what it is. But here you can see on the left it tells you what it is and on the right it tells you. So there's no confusion at all, it's really really simple to read. So I have actually put little triangles in the corners of the pages once I've completed them and I'm sure I've missed some out somewhere so... Yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter. I might go back and put more in, but you can see just from this overview, there's quite a lot of pages. So, yeah, it's quite a few to do. And then I love this bee at the back, it's so cute. And again, we've got the lovely mossy green colour. So, that is the book. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I have heard rumours, and I don't know if or when she's coming out with it, but I heard that Lady Doody's coming out with a new book. I, I'm i not too sure, but um, I'd love to know if she is. If she is, I would definitely be getting that. I love that this is hardback and I love that it's a smaller book as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything I think. So Barb, thank you so much for the suggestion. It was a great idea and I was going to get around to doing this anyway when I was about 30 or 40%, so that was good timing. Um, and yeah, everything will be down below as usual, my links, um, how to contact me, stuff like that. Um, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment down below if you want, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or comment. So yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone!